Welcome to the channel, everyone. Okay, as promised, I'm going to straighten this door here. Uh, I demoed this in a couple of previous videos with the picks and spoons, and I talked about this. So we're going to get started to straighten this. Now let's talk about this door first thing. This is off a of Chevy Traverse, and this was replaced because the amount of damage here, although this is repairable, the shell is damaged quite a bit too, and I'll flip that over in a minute and talk about that. But uh, another option could have been to skin it, but with, uh, once again, with all the damage on the sh uh, shell, it was just a quicker and easier job uh, for the shop to replace this door. Now this is a donor door. I don't have the vehicle here. This is just for this video, but uh, I'm gonna go step by step of what it takes to repair this, how we're gonna start. Um, and work process of hammers and dollies and spoons and all that stuff. Now, if you've watched my other videos, what I've talked about primary damage and secondary damage, this is a perfect case right here. You can see where the impact was right on this door. It caved this in, it pushed the shell in. We got this big eyebrow up here, a crown, and it's actually, uh, it's pretty profound. There's a lot of damage up here. Now, it didn't get hit up here. This is from all this uh, the impact down here came it in and everything buckles around it. So this is an area that you don't want to touch until very last because it doesn't do any good to try and hammer this down because it has nowhere to go until all this comes up. When this gets all straightened, uh, probably within 80, 90 percent, a lot of this is going to disappear on its own. So that's one of the things uh, I'll kind of keep track on that and point that out as we go. We got a couple body lines running through here we got to put in this one here is pretty much gone and it's got a uh, sharp one here and those will help because there's an area once we work this up it puts some stiffness back into this panel so I'll explain that and I'll try and keep uh, track of how much time I have in this you know it'll be edited in the video it can't show the whole thing because probably just to get this ready for paint, it's going to be probably eight hours. I imagine guessing that there's probably five or six hours of just metal work and maybe two hours to do the Bondo work. So it'll be split up in several videos here. So I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to show you the backside and what we're dealing with here. Okay, I hope it shows up in the video, but there's a lot of damage to this shell, and that's why the shop chose to replace this. Uh, the shell is kind of collapsed right here. This area is actually rolled up a little bit, and there's a pretty good buckle in here just from this thing getting bent in. Now, the intrusion beams aren't actually damaged. They may be a lot, little out of place from where they're welded, but the main intrusion beam comes down here. So, I mean, it is possible to repair this shell but it's not cost effective. The labor to, to, to do this and, and the skin isn't worth uh, the time involved, and that's why it was replaced. But uh, one of the issues with trying to repair a shell like this when it's caved in this bad is you start hammering on this and it'll actually just kind of roll over. It's, it's tough to get them to go down flat. And then if the skin comes off the shell, well, then you got a lot of trouble because this glue bond is going to break and once it slides off the shell you've got to come in here try and open this up pry that flange open get the shell where you want it get it hammered back on and then once again you're trying to just put glue on the back side so it ends up just being a big mess but for this video I'm going to just straighten this out uh, what looks pretty decent and we're going to call it good there now if this was going to be repaired in a shop um, this needs to stay on the car to get this straightened, to get this edge to fit the rear door. And, uh, you know, for, for this purpose, it's off. I'm going to make it look halfway decent. We're going to go from there. Now, I know a lot of guys are probably saying, well, he's kind of cheating because he's got the door on the sawhorses. And that's actually my point. I've taken doors off of cars for years to repair them. It's just a lot easier. When this door is on the car and it's in a vertical position you're sitting on your stool all your damage is down below you and you're trying to and you can reach in the door and reach around it it's in the back side if it's in the front it's you, you can't do it at all but the thing is you can't sight down it as good when it's down low you're, you're on your creeper and you're trying to look at it you're trying to feel it so uh, I always just take the door off 
put it on once I get it fit to, to what I need, either fender or the rear door, make it fit, and then do all my body work while it's on the saw horses. I got a set of tall saw horses here, and you sit on your stool, and if you get your overhead light on your ceiling in the right spot, or you move your panel so it's lined up, you can you can watch your progress with the light, and it's just a whole lot easier. And uh, it only takes R and I a door at this point. 15 minutes tops because to repair this the handle's going to be out the belt moldings off uh, the mirrors off the moldings are all off the trim panels off so what's left is a couple of bolts to hold the glass in that's what 10 seconds R and I a glass anymore and you unplug your wiring harness the door check and your bolts and your hinges and these doors there's really no adjustment anymore so when you put them back in you don't have to adjust them the bolts line themselves up so, uh, I mean, you're only talking maybe 15, 20 minutes to r &I the door to repair it, and the job's going to come out a whole lot easier. And if you try it, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. You put it on horses and, and straighten it. Now, one thing, I've got these old wooden saw horses, and these work a lot better than those uh, saw horses that are just a bent conduit. Those things shake all over the place. You can't really slide underneath them. They're always in the way. These, you can move them out of the way. You can slide a sawhorse in or out, over, back and forth. Uh, so they do work a lot better. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna get a block of wood, some tools, a hammer, and I'm gonna make this shell look a little bit better than it is now.
Okay, I think we're going to call that good enough. This one, just from working on that shell, never touching the skin, that eyebrow is mostly gone out of there. I mean, it's still going to have to take some work, but uh, from what it was when I started to what it is now, there's a world of difference. So, um, what I'm going to do now is just rough this out. I'm going to get this body line up in here fairly close. And uh, there's probably, I'm going to say, four to five hours of actually metal work on this door to get it ready for Bondo. And then from Bondo, probably another two hours. So it's too long for just one video. So I'm going to break this up. So uh, it'll be in several different videos coming out. So what I'm going to do right now is just get underneath here and get this line in here roughed out pretty close and then we'll see what the rest looks like. something to fit in here it's always trial and error this is what I got right now and I'm gonna tuck this inside between the shell and the skin and pry up on it it's probably gonna take quite a few different tools uh, to work this out but uh, this will give me a start and that's what I want to get up next is this line I'm not too concerned about any of these other dents but I want to put this into place Once again, I'm not worried about getting it 100%. I want to get this up and then start working kind of all the way around and work towards the center. Okay, now it comes up but it doesn't stay up and what happens when this gets flattened out, this sharp body line will actually get pushed down. So when I push up on this, that's why I'm tapping this way to push some of the metal back into that area and it should, should help it stay. Just like that. It didn't spring back down. I could probably push it. Yep. But by forcing this line back up closer to where it's supposed to be, that's going to put metal into here to stiffen that up. Okay, without going too much on it, now I want to try and get some of this up. And I can get a better line on my uh, door edge there. I can sight down a little better. And it's got a little dip there, so I'm going to bring that up before I do anything else. Okay, now I'll... There's a crease running through here. There's a pretty good dent in here. I'm going to uh, rough those out. What I'm doing here, I flip this over and I'm using this to pry on to get up in here. I don't know if it's going to do it 100%. I may have to dig deeper in the toolbox. Actually, that's doing what I'm doing this fits inside that shell and I'm just using that as a fulcrum point and there's enough weight here that I can bring this up and that's what I said about when you're sitting down here it'll put a little dent everywhere I hit and I can just sight right down it's probably not showing up on the film but I can watch my progress I can see what I'm doing from there I'm gonna move down into this one favorite tools right there.
Okay, now you can hear the difference by putting the dolly on the back of that. And I'm doing the same thing. I got this against the inside of that shell and I'm just prying up on it and smacking that and trying to work this dent out because you can't really get in there to get any, uh, you need leverage or you need weight. And I haven't got anything that'll fit perfect, but with enough weight here and just uh, bumping on it, but you can tell the difference between using a dolly and, and not using a dolly on it. You'll hear the sound and it'll start moving it better with the dolly on the back. So it sounds kind of hollow without the dolly and I don't want to push on it. All I want to do is just kind of hover it right on there. I don't want to push down on it. Okay, uh, I think that's going to wrap this video up. I've got it roughed out, and like I said, I kind of surprised myself just by moving that shell, what it did. This is actually, right across here is, is fairly straight. It'll use very little filler on here. Still got a little eyebrow with a low spot. That's going to be the last thing I'm going to do. Uh, so the next video, I'm going to uh, work. It, it, it kind of starts coming in right here. And I'm going to get this strip pretty well, pretty much where I want it. And I'll use a straight edge on this line here to get that perfectly straight before I do uh, finish it 100%. So uh, actually, the bottom of the door come out nice. So uh, yeah, like I said, the proof is in the pudding. The the secondary damage you don't want to touch that until the end. You want to do everything else. And I was actually surprised just by moving that shell, and it's probably still not. 100% like I said without having a door to fit it to but it looks pretty close uh, This door come out way better than I thought so it's actually a very repairable door skin so uh, anyway uh, If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and thanks for watching